Hi guys and welcome. So in this video what I really wanted to touch on to be honest with you is what you can do with a cheap or the cheaper end of a respray. Now Dan the owner of this MG Metro that we've got in at the moment is a friend of the guy that we did the Mustang for not too long back and George with the Mustang put him in touch with us and got him to come over to us and have a chat about doing his Metro Cup race car. So this particular car is part of the Drayton Manor Park MG Metro Cup and it's a Raver Metro GTI. Now obviously being basically what is a track car, we don't want to be doing the usual high end repaint that we would normally do on say something like George's Mustang that we did for him. Now obviously materials and everything like that is going to be uh, you know, a massive part of the cost. So that's where we saved a lot of the cost on this car. And although technically the title on this car is a little bit clickbaity as far as you know YouTube titles go, this whole job as far as materials, i.e., uh, you know the sanding discs, all the consumables, the the primer, the filler, the paint itself, everything on this car came in to well under five hundred pounds or six hundred and fifty dollars for our US viewers. So I just wanted to show that you can put out a really nice, really clean respray um, for that kind of money. Now obviously that wouldn't include the labour cost on this job, um, that was obviously on top of that, but for, you know, if you're a guy who wants, or who has a little bit of knowledge, you know, you can put out a job like this at a very reasonable cost if you have the knowledge to spray this yourself. And being a Cup Series race car, um, obviously the guy that owns this car, Dan, wants this to look nice while he's going around the track, but did of his own admission say that at some point during the year it probably will be back to have some work done. Obviously because this is you know, a Cup Series race car, it will get some damage so it will be back at some point during the season or we will get some panels sent to us at some point during the season to tidy up so we can keep this car nice and clean throughout, uh, you know, during his race season and during the championship season. Um, which for us is absolutely fine and that's why we went for something like this using a 2k direct gloss because obviously if we were going into base and clear on a car like this then obviously that would put the cost sky high straight away now the red that we're actually using was part of um, a cheap seven and a half litre kit of red um, I believe it was the pillar box red that we used on this and it was around about 75 80 pounds something around there for the actual gloss and the hardener itself obviously there's the cost of the primer the sanding this masking you know the fuel for the booth and then it's obviously the body filler and everything else that goes into the job so I would estimate that this job you know you could put this kind of job out for around about the 500 uh, pound mark and um, with no problem if you can do it yourself obviously us being a paint shop and us being a business obviously there was labor on top of that um, it's not something that I like to disclose how much we charge customers because I think that is between ourselves and the customers but for something like this you know if you were planning on trying to do a nice cheap tidy up on your own car but you know with a good quality finish and also it you know this will last it's not you know been had cheap primer on it we've not bodged anything on this car you know, even at this stage, we did put a full coat of wet on wet on this car to seal everything up and make sure we had a nice, uh, you know, clean surface before we started putting this red down. Because you know, anyone who's sort of like paints quite often will or has done a little bit of painting in their time will know that red is extremely poor for coverage. So we didn't want any rub throughs or any different colours or anything where we hadn't had or hadn't put primer down. It was just easier to give this a coat of wet on wet before we started and then starting shooting this 2k gloss down. Now, this car came to us because it had a new quarter panel fitted on this particular side, as last year, um, I think towards the end of his race season, someone had sideswiped the car, and it damaged all the wing, it damaged all the door, and also this rear quarter panel. So it's had a new quarter panel fitted before it came to us. We then tidied that up, just did a little bit of flushing out around where the welds were, cleaned any welds up and just made sure that panel was nice and flat and nice and smooth and obviously so that you can't tell that it's had that new panel welded in we just did that bodywork to tidy that panel up 
We then went around the rest of the car, got rid of any dents or any damage around the entire rest of the car. And if you saw the 3300 GTO primer gun review that I did, we then put a couple of coats of primer just over those areas. And then, as I say, we then blocked that out with the 320 all over, gave the full car a coat of wet on wet um, ahead of obviously putting the direct gloss down. Now, the spray gun that I'm actually using for putting this direct gloss down on this car is the 3300 GTO Evo Air Cap Wet on Wet Primer Gun. Because when I put the wet on wet primer down on this car, I was quite surprised at just how nice the wet on wet primer went down. It transferred really well, just the same as it did with the 3300 GTO Primer Gun. And I was finding that it had a, a really, really nice smooth finish. And it was just really nice to put the wet on wet primer down with. And I thought, well, hey, you know what? I've got this gun out. I've just washed it out. Why not just throw the gloss in there and see how this gloss comes out? Because one thing that I don't particularly like doing, if I can help it, is using thinners or reducer in the gloss. I like to try and leave it at a two to one mix. That way I can get down a real good thick build and a real nice wet gun finish coat on a car like this. And not have to worry about that little bit of extra thinners or reducer in there. Um, you know, without the risk of that little extra thinners making it sag. I want it to atomize and I want it to transfer but obviously I don't want the risk of the thinners making it run or sag or anything like that. So I thought, you know, as Xena as this has performed so well on the wet on wet stage, then hey, let's just throw the gloss in it and see how it performs. Because when I was using the 3300 GTO with the car tech air cap in a 1.3, you know what? It was a very, very, very capable gloss gun and I really, really liked it for gloss. And I was thinking to myself when I was doing the wet on wet primer on this, you know what, this feels just as nice, if not a tiny bit nicer in the way that this is transferring. So, you know, what I forgot to lose, let's put some gloss in it and let's try it and let's see how it comes out. And I have to say it came out exceptionally well. It actually came out a lot better than I thought it would by a long way. Like we've barely had to touch this car whatsoever as far as any polishing work goes and I mean for the kind of budget we've got to work with on this car it's not something that we were obviously going to do a full flat and polish on it anyway but this car had a exceptionally clean gun finish all over and a lot of that as well I think was down to the spray gun because as you can tell there is not a lot of overspray off this gun whatsoever so let's overspray in the booth means obviously less overspray in the air that overspray on a rear extraction boob like we have obviously will travel back through the boob so as it dries in the air that will come back down and create dust on the panels so technically you know this shell and a lot of the panels behind it could have ended up quite dirty if this was a very high overspray gun but it's not it really transfers exceptionally well and as I said I, th I had a feeling that it might now I posted up some of the pictures of this job on Instagram and some of the guys were actually laughing about the fact that you know I did the gloss work on this with a wet on wet primer gun and just how nice it looks and I think um, well I don't think I know you know it's a credit to Segola on the technology of these guns and these air caps that something that is designed for the purpose of wet and wet primer can put down gloss so well I mean I haven't tried this for clear but I would love to try this gun for clear just to see what it was like um, it was just on the off chance on this day that I was just in a bit of a strange mood and I just thought yeah you know why not let's try this primer gun for gloss you know because why not um, and you know what I'm glad I did because it's been absolutely exceptional for it um, I've painted some of the parts for this car afterwards um, I did the roof in white, again absolutely um, exceptional, really nice flat gun finish with leaving 
the paint nice and thick at two to one with no reducer again and it just it did it did an out, it absolutely outstanding job better than i thought it would have and for me you know that's what it's all about as daft as it was to try and i suppose in some people's eyes try a wet and wet primer gun to then do the you know the top coat gloss on a car with it really really did a brilliant job and like i said this isn't you know this isn't expensive gloss this is probably you know some of the cheapest gloss you could get hold of it's not cheap in the fact that it won't you know it's not going to last or anything like that this you know this product will last um you know you can normally tell by but you wouldn't be able to get this kind of gun finish that we got in this video if it wasn't a half decent gloss and for the price i have to say i can't i couldn't fault it one bit you know we put an exceptional finish on this whole car it's now really nice really clean and it is a budget respray we are not you know we're trying to work here on doing a concourse respray we are trying to do a respray on a budget for a guy because he knows he is going to prank this car at some point it's going to get dented it's going to get damaged it's going to get scuffed in a bend or something like that so obviously he doesn't want to go into spending thousands and thousands on getting a respray on a car like this just to tidy it up for his next race season which i can completely understand <clears throat> and as a body shop i think it's you know down to us to try and accommodate the best we can um as far as a job like this goes and here I've just tack ragged all this bonnet off now I'm doing that for exactly the reason that I said a minute ago that any of the overspray obviously with this being a flat panel and sitting flat I don't want any overspray that has dried in the air and landed on this bonnet to then affect the finish or leave us with a very dirt covered bonnet um, so I've just given that a really good scrub over with the tack rag before putting this first coat down on the bonnet now gun settings wise I ran this full fan, um, I was running 2 bar of air pressure and fluid wise I'm not 100% sure this was obviously the first time that I'd used this for gloss so as I went along a bit like there I was just getting a feel for how the gun was laying down and then tweaking it a little bit wetter or a little bit drier as I needed to as I went along and it did take me I'd probably say around 5 to 10 minutes to get the hang of where the sweet spot was. But I mean, as you can see, on something like this bonnet, it's absolutely hammering this gloss down. And don't forget, we've got no reducer in this gloss. So, in effect, at this moment, this gloss is still quite thick. And it was putting it down with a really nice flat finish. And within, I'd say, around about two minutes, this had flowed out to an absolutely lovely, almost perfectly flat gun finish on something like this bonnet. Um, I mean as far as this bonnet goes it's probably got around three maybe four nibs in this bonnet and I would leave it alone I would not bother um, polishing it up you know it's not a concourse respray it's better than a factory finish off the gun so I'd just leave it there you know there just would be no point in going to that extent and polishing it and also as mad as this probably sounds to some of you guys watching this that's one thing that I actually struggle with with jobs like this we're so used to doing the sort of like really concourse you know absolutely perfect you know millimeter perfect resprays on cars these days at our shop that when you actually come to do a job like this where you know you have instruction that it does not have to be perfect they just want a nice clean respray to freshen up the car for the next race season it's really really difficult i find not to put you know physically to stop yourself putting the same level of detail into a car like this as you would into you know the normal resprays that we do like the mustang or something like that i always find myself going that little bit further than we should just you know for my own peace of mind that you know if i just see this tiniest little bit that i don't like somewhere i'm like mm, you know like for the budget that we've got and for the customer's um request we shouldn't really be going that far and doing that bit but it really bugged me if i leave it <laughs> which you know i suppose in one way is a little bit of false economy but I, do, I just like the job to be right you know it's one thing that you know i do find you know the more and more that we do you know whether it be a quick blow over like this or whether it be <clears throat> you know a concourse job you know i like them to look right either way because at the end of the day it's our name 
on that car that goes out the door with that paint job. So if someone looks at it and says, "Oh, you know, well, I only, you know, I know it's a bit rough, but I only paid this much," you know, it's, you know, it's an awkward situation for myself. You know, I think that, you know, we can cut the cost on the materials and labour-wise. I mean, we literally set ourselves, you know, one week to do this car. So on the Monday morning, this car was in one whole piece. Um, you know, doors on glass in it everything and by the Friday night everything bar the bumpers on this car was painted and put back together you know and it had to go that way to keep it with it in budget but that then gave me basically five days to get this thing stripped sanded repaired blocked glossed and get the roof repaired and get the roof glossed if we could keep it within that amount of time then I was quite happy that you know it would still be profitable for us um, and also it would give me enough time that I could do the work that I needed to make this a straight car for the customer. Um, don't be wrong there is still the odd little wobble in a panel, there probably is the odd tiny little chip here or there, you know we haven't gone to town making sure every single stone chip, every single tiny little mark is out of this car. Um, we've done you know probably 95% of it. Um, so there will be, you know, if you look in a small little area, there will be little imperfections, but this was not meant to be a concourse job. This was basically meant to be a cheap, quick repaint that would tidy this car up so this guy can get it out looking stunning on his next championship race season. And I think, to be quite fair, for the amount of time that we've spent on this car and also you know, the kind of materials that we use, I think we've more than achieved that for our customer. And Dan, the guy that owns the car, um, as we like to do with quite a few of our customers that we're doing these big jobs for, we like to send them progress pictures as we go so they can see how the car's coming along and what's been done and how things have been done and how it looks on that particular day or that particular week if it's a really, really big job. Um, he's been following the job along and also I know he will be watching this video as well so a shout out to Dan um, who will be watching this video and also a thank you to him for sharing the videos um, that we did uh, the previous video that we did on this car and I know he's going to share this one as well so a quick little shout out to Dan and Dan also does have a little channel of his own um, where he posts up his race footage so if any of you guys are interested in seeing this little Rover Metro um, going around Alton Park or one of the racetracks in the championship series then I will leave a link in the description to Dan's channel so you can check out this little car going like the clappers around the racetrack and also I have to say it was actually quite a nice job to do it's not the sort of job that we normally do at our shop normally we do get requests for a lot of the sort of concourse and the really high-end sort of like absolutely perfect inside and out repaint so doing something like this did make it a bit of a change as I said it what did mess with my head a little bit because I am so used to doing the other jobs but you know for what we did on this car and the amount of time we had I think obviously we've ended up with a really nice final result I know Dan our customer is more than happy with the car which for me is what matters the most um, and as I said you know to turn this car around in five days um, with only basic the bumpers and the spoiler left to paint I think we've knocked this out of the park in no time really um, and it's come out really nice as well for the amount of time that we could afford to spend on the car so as far as I'm concerned you know Dan's really happy with the car we're happy with the amount of time and obviously you know cost wise that we've spent on it so it just goes to show that sometimes you can put out a nice repaint for a lot less money um, if it's something that your customers after I know all of us obviously would like to turn around and say oh you know we would like an unlimited budget to spend an unlimited amount of time on a car so we can get every single car we do in concourse condition but unfortunately not every car is the same not every customer has that sort of budget and like on something like this you wouldn't want to do a concourse repaint on this car because not long after Dan gets this back, you know, literally within weeks of this car going back to him, once he's done a little bit of the mechanical work that he needs to do, this will be rocking it round a racetrack again. It will be getting stone chipped. 
there is the possibility that it may get damaged in you know a little bump on a corner or something like that you know as I said in days of thunder all those years ago rubbins racing you know it happens so there would be no point going to that absolute concourse extent on this car and I think you know for the nice quick easy gun finish that we've achieved on this car um, that it's more than good enough for you know what is essentially a track car and actually a random one um, for you guys that are still here towards the end of the video my little Days of Thunder reference there um, if any of you guys are a Days of Thunder film fan you will remember that little scene in the barn where they are building the stock car and they get on to spraying it now as a kid that film I always used to absolutely love that film I've even got it on DVD still now and do watch it every now and again and that particular scene in that film is actually what first sparked my interest as far as spray painting goes I just thought the way they built that car in that garage and panelled it up and resprayed it in that really half arse way I don't know what it was about that film but that film in particular is what actually sparked my first little bit of passion as a young kid into the world of spray painting so little random fact for you there also I just want to give a quick shout out to you guys um, that have responded to the introduction to spray painting training days that we advertised recently we have had an absolute immense amount of inquiries and also quite a few bookings as far as those spray painting days go already um, which is absolutely unbelievable and I really do thank you guys for your support with that it's something that a lot of you guys have been asking me about over the years and we've wanted to do for some time but we just had to get everything to a certain point so we could offer you guys the best day possible um, and so much so now that we have had that many inquiries and quite a few bookings from this that we are actually in the process at the moment of tearing apart quite a bit of the shop and refurbishing everywhere ready to actually commence these days in March for you guys and as soon as the refurb on the shop has finished very soon I will also do a little bit of a workshop walk around video for you lot because um, I know you guys have been asking me about that for quite some time but it's just been that busy between YouTube and obviously the business and family life that we just haven't had time to finish off a few things at the workshop that we wanted to and we do operate in quite a small shop so it's difficult sometimes to take the time out to try and refurbish a certain area or a certain room of the shop just because there isn't that much room to put stuff when we have to take everything out of everywhere so as soon as all that work has been completed over the next sort of seven to ten days I will get a little video done of a little video walk around the shop for you guys so you can see my workshop so we are approaching towards the sort of end of this video now uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video I know it's a little bit longer than the average video that we normally do um, but just wanted you guys to get a real good view um, on a repaint like this see how we would do it um, and how we can put out you know a really cost effective cheap clean respray for a customer um, if that is something that they want now obviously for something like this it would have to be in a direct gloss we couldn't afford to do something like this in base and clear just because the base and clear price on something like this would probably you know almost I'd say probably put the material cost up by half again so if someone wanted a job like this we would have to sort of keep it to a straight gloss colour rather than using something like a base and a clear coat but you know you can get quite a lot of ready mix kits these days in a lot of different colours for a very affordable price so even if you've got something like I don't know a cheap camper van that you want to do a cheap tidy up job on you know you could get a nice cheap 2k gloss kit um, and if you've got that you know enough knowledge to, to paint it yourself and you're happy that you have got that knowledge and also you've got a safe environment to paint it in um, then you could get a really nice clean job for not a, you know too much of a reasonable amount of money really and as I said you know about this gun earlier on again <coughs> you will see on this second coat, you know, this gun really does come into its own as far as doing direct gloss work. 
Um, it is something that I have already recommended to a few people who have asked me since they have seen the pictures on Instagram, um, asking what gun it was and also what air cap setup it was. And I have rec highly recommend this as a wet on wet gun or a direct gloss gun if that's something that you are after as a dedicated gun or a gun that you can use for both to be quite honest because from now on I will be using this as a wet on wet and a direct gloss gun because I do quite often do a few bits of direct gloss on camper vans and stuff like that so it would be an ideal gun to get an absolutely smashing off the gun finish on those camper van jobs that we do as well and as always I will leave a link in the description below to this spray gun from our sponsors at PMP Supplies and also don't forget they still do have the Segola sale on until the 31st of March this year so if you are looking for a really really good spray gun at a really really good price then I can highly recommend the guys over at PMP Supplies not just for the prices but also for their exceptional customer service I quite often um, and I mean just today while I've been editing this video I have had around three or four messages from people who have purchased guns from PMP Supplies and have all said that they are very grateful that I have recommended them to them and just how much of a great customer service those guys have there. So that is it for me for today guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Bye for now.